All right, hey guys, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to do this in one shot, so wish me luck here. Um, you should have a quarter of the clay that I gave you um, already sectioned out, and this is what we're gonna use for our coil vessel. So the very first thing you're gonna do is create the base for your coil vessel. So measure down from the top about an inch, okay? And if you don't have a ruler, let me teach you a little trick. If you go like this with your ring, or sorry, your pointer finger, if you just kind of curl it in, this space between your two knuckles here is roughly an inch. So let me see if I can. Okay, so it's not perfect, but it's roughly an inch. So if you ever are kind of um, in a pinch, you can always kind of knuckle it over. So half of an inch would be half of that. So you just go down from the top and then cut yourself off a piece like this, okay? So it'll be a half inch thick slice. And then you can just put your other clay off to the side while you work on this. So for the base, we're gonna make a circle as close as we can. Um, and a lot of times, or in the, um, in the ceramics room, we use a slab roller and we use rolling pins. Um, but this works out fine too. So if you have just like a glass um, or a glass bottle, or I mean, even like a metal bottle, something that you guys aren't really using that much anymore and you can clean easily, this works just as well, okay? So when you get to this point, you may need to stand up so that you can put all your pressure straight down. And then you're just gonna roll till you roll it out. It's like making cookies, right? And you don't wanna go too, too thin. You don't want it to get too thin, I should say. But we just want it a little bit wider so we can get a nice circle out of it. All right, and you don't wanna go thinner than a quarter of an inch. So a um, quarter of an inch, let's see how we did. Did pretty good right there. So right to there. Um, again, you can use your knuckle to knuckle, your pointer finger. Um, so now I'm just gonna kind of get it into a little bit of a circle shape, and then I'm going to trace out a circle. So any circle you want, guys, just whatever can fit on here. Um, I'm looking right now at, let's see, my cup, but I need to drink my water, hold on. Or dump it out. <laughs> All right, so you can use a cup or a glass or anything. Push it down into there and you get your circle. So if you need to, you can always kind of clean things up. All right, and then you should have a little circle. And if you want it to be maybe a little bit thinner, you can always kind of do that. All right, so my circle is uh, about three and a quarter inches wide, but yours can be whatever you want. I would stick to something under, mm, under like four to five. I wouldn't go much bigger than that, but I wouldn't go under three either because then it gets to be too small. So the next part is we're actually gonna do this again, okay? Um, because we're making the bottom right now, but we also wanna make a little top. So this part's optional. Um, if you end up wanting to have a little top on yours, I'm just gonna get this off so it doesn't stick. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna measure down a little bit, half of an inch. And I'm just gonna mark it all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. All right. 
So you can use a lot of different things, guys, as kind of substitutions for these tools. So for the needle tool here, you can use the toothpick, um, or you can use, in the case of slipping and scoring, you can use the fork. For this, the toothpick might be a little bit too weak to cut through like this. So you may just need to use a kitchen knife for this one. Just make sure you wash it good and you don't use one of the best ones. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to roll this one out again, just try to get it even. So again, I'm gonna stand up when I do this and that way I can know I'm, I'm going straight down with my pressure. And you get it at about the same so that you can actually just trace over. All right, I'm just gonna use the cup again so I know it's exact. <laughs> All right, so now I've got two, right? So one's gonna be the bottom and one is going to be a little lid. And that lid is totally optional. You don't have to do it if you don't want to. All right, so let's say this one's gonna be our bottom, right? And I did make it a little bit bigger. So let me just, hold on. I just wanna kind of ever so slightly. And we wanna do this now because the clay, as it dries out, it actually shrinks a bit. So if you want things to be the same size, your best bet is to create them at the same time. And that way they'll kind of shrink at the same rate. If you waited till the end and this was already dry to make your top, you may, may make the top and then it shrinks to be smaller than that piece. Um, and then your lid might actually just fall in. All right, so here is the first start. So you probably did this as a kid a lot. And so what we're doing with our coil vessel is the first thing is we need to make coils. So do you remember doing this with Play-Doh? Same exact thing. So you wanna get it as even as possible and it's actually a little bit harder than you think. I'm actually terrible at, at doing coils, so I definitely need the practice. You wanna be putting the same amount of pressure with all of your fingers. If you're pressing down too hard on one or the other, it's going to just make it really uneven. And then if you get kind of um, little like creases, I kind of fill them in as they go. So you kind of want to correct things as you go. Otherwise, they just get worse and worse. So as you are rolling these out, it's going to start to get a little bit bigger. And another little trick I learned was you can take your roll and if you just kind of do like a half turn in one way like that, and then go again, it kind of prevents it from rolling or twisting by its own, on its own. But like I said, I'm not the best at this, so. So you wanna get a coil that is about the size of a finger. So pick a finger of yours, right? If you're pretty petite, maybe use your pointer finger. Um, if you're bigger, you can use your pinky, um, but anything in between is actually just gonna be fine. So the, the main thing is you want it to be uniform throughout the whole thing. So you can see it's getting a little bit thicker on this side, so I'm trying to, I'm only pushing down with my right hand. see if that's enough. Oh, yeah, it's like perfect. Almost perfect. Okay, oh, this is in the bottom. Okay. All right, so your first coil 
is done. Um, I might go and just kind of like smooth things up a little bit. Decide like which side's gonna be on the outside. You want the prettiest side to be on the outside. So, let's just get this a little bit more even. All right, and I'm just going to kind of measure it off here um, just so that I can kind of see how long this one is. So when I make the next one, I know kind of exactly where to go. So I'm gonna go right till the end would kind of meet that end and, and cut off the excess. And then you can see that would be pretty good. So let's see how long this is. All right, nine inches. Okay, so now I know if I make coils nine inches, then they'll just be ready to go. The other thing is if I make them all nine inches, I know that it'll kind of grow up all uniform. If I kind of eyeball it, a lot of times, sometimes they, uh, they tend to like start going out this way <laughs> or people start to curl in um, as they go up because they're not making these the same length. All right, so this is the best part. You guys ready? We're gonna slip and score, okay? So I've told you a million times already. You, this is your first time with clay and I've already told you a million times. <laughs> but slipping and scoring is the most important thing you can do, okay? Um, because it is how this stuff is going to stay together. If you don't slip and score, things will just pop off, okay? So to slip and score, we're going to, you can use your toothpick pick for this part. I'm going to scratch little, uh, like a cross hatch. See that? And I'm gonna go around the whole perimeter. And the key here is guys, you know, I've seen a lot of people, they try to be really neat. You know, you don't have to be neat. You can make it look really ugly, okay? No one's gonna see it. Um, it's function, not uh, form. So it's just all about utility. Um, one of the common mistakes I see people make a lot is they either just go like this and they do that around and that's not gonna work or they only go in one direction and they're really far apart. So can you see the difference with what I've done over here? I mean, I have like, like chewed it up, okay? So make it look like an animal, you got it. And after you have slipped and scored that, you have to slip and score the piece you are attaching as well. So I'm just going to use the side that's kind of up at me, but use it accordingly, guys. Um, you know, if you had like a favorite side or something like that, that you wanna face outwards, then make sure you do the right one so that it can face outwards. but you can always smooth everything later too, so you don't have to. I often will do this how I'm kind of just going in one direction down the line, and then I'll do the rest, the little cross hatches. So you can see I'm not worried about making it look pretty. Okay. So basically the whole concept behind slipping and scoring is if we were to just stick two pieces of clay together, like if I was going to stick this piece on here for like a little handle on my lid, if I just place this down, you know, you might feel like it's pretty strong. It might, oh, <laughs> it might even hold, it didn't, but it could hold, right? Um, it's not going to work though. So as it dries, the clay is going to basically um, recede from each other and it's just going to pop right off, okay? And if it doesn't pop off when you have it, it'll probably pop off once you give it to me <laughs> because um, 
it's going to be like bone dry by then. Okay. Um, and thing, if it pops off and I see that there's no, um, you know, little cross hatch, then I know you didn't slip and score. So you always have to slip and score. And um, basically what we're doing is in that illustration of not slipping and scoring, if we put two pieces of clay together just as they are, it's like putting your fists together, okay? So when you're pushing them together, that's really great. But as soon as you pull apart, they're just gonna pop away from each other. So what we're doing is we're kind of, uh, you know, breaking it up a little bit, almost like you're with your fingers out, okay? And then when we put them together, when we join this together, then they kind of interlock like this, okay? And so now when you push them together, that's great. And when you pull them apart, it's really strong, okay? So you really want that to be strong. And then, so that's the scoring part. The slip is when we're gonna add water around um, and that slip acts kind of like a glue, all right? So if we think about um, this really keeping it together, um, the glue is, is taking all of that clay that you've really like munched up. And when this goes into the kiln, it is going to be so strong and so connected that it's going to act like it was always one clay body. Um, as if you never ever actually attached it in any way. It was, it was one piece of clay. So that's like the best you can do. So to add my slip here, I usually just use my finger, but you can use a brush. And I know slip is clay suspended in water, yeah? But when you just add water to this kind of scored up clay, it basically turns it into slip. So you can kind of see some slip forming. And I actually, only, you only have to wet one side actually. So once that's down, you're gonna put it scored side down. And then just like you would when you do this, you kind of curl your fingers and you kind of wiggle them in there to push them in you're going to do that here too. So it's good to press down and kind of just like wiggle it into place. So it really like locks in there. And then what you're gonna do, and this is that extra, you know, it's going to really make it super strong. You can use your modeling tool or your tongue depressor or a popsicle stick. I sometimes just use my fingers. So you're gonna go on the inside here and you're going to push the clay down to fill in the little crease between the coil and the bottom. It's a storm outside, guys. So this is one of the most important connections um, on your coil vessel because this is what's obviously connecting the floor to the walls. So you want it to be extra, extra good. And then you can go in with one of your modeling tools. I'm just gonna use this because I have it right next to me. And kind of push some of that clay down. That this, this spoon would work good too for this. And I know some people have pretty long nails, so they're gonna wanna use the tools for this. If you use your fingers, it'll probably just 
chew it up. Okay, and then I might spend a little time kind of going through it and, um, you know, making it look a little bit prettier. And then for this first layer, I'm just going to smooth it around so you, the first coil just blends in with the base. Okay. So this part I'm only doing on the first coil, but you could do it for the whole thing. So you, you can make a whole coil vessel that's completely smooth on the inside and out. Or you can leave each coil kind of in its shape and just smooth out the inside. So the inside would be perfectly smooth and all that. And don't spend too much time fussing, okay? Um, you, it's easy to kind of just get caught up when, and try to make this look perfect. And you don't have to. So don't even worry your pretty little head, okay? Um, so I'm going to go in and start making my next one. And the goal here is to get it to be the same width as the other one you just did. So we got a little ways to go. This part looks pretty good. Let me see if I have nine inches of that. Okay, all right, so we'll just double check. Looks pretty good, maybe a little bit. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing. So now I'm gonna score the top of this first coil. And don't worry too much about, you know, it not looking that clean because when the clay is in this workable state, you can smooth it out um, pretty easily. And then you can also, when it's leather hard, you can go in there and kind of refine things. And then when it's very leather hard, almost bone dry, you can then go in and actually sand things down. So you can get rid of any of those little like, little bits, little nooks and crannies that um, start to appear. Just gonna take a little, you can always take a little bit off too. I feel like that got a little bit thick right there and I couldn't get rid of it. All 
All right. So now I am going to score this second coil. And again, I just go in one direction on the way down and then I'll go the other direction so that I get my cross hatch. Make sure they're nice and close together so they can really do some good work for you. So when you do the slip step, you really only need to put the water on one side. So I usually um, put it on the bottom just so the water can kind of sink into it a little bit. So I'm going to wiggle it in there, just lock it in, and then I'm going to go in and, sorry, I keep wanting to cover it, but it's just how I want to hold it, um, go in with my finger and smooth it down so it just looks like one piece inside. And where the ends come together, just move some of that clay kind of over to cover that seam. And you do this as you go up. So if you just put the coils down and wait to do this at the end, it's kind of a lot of work. Plus you have to go pretty deep in there depending on how tall your vessel is. So it's a little bit easier to just kind of do this as you move up. So you can see that when you're looking inside, it's pretty, pretty seamless, okay? Nobody really sees the inside either, so doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's really just to strengthen everything. So if you are wanting to smooth your whole vessel up, or at least part of it, you would still do that on the outside as well as you go up. And then you can always add you know, some texture to it or some designs and we can um, do that at a later date. But if you really wanted your coils to show um, and you know, maybe they got pressed out a little bit. Just go back through with, um, let's see, go back through with maybe the edge of the toothpick, like the side of it, um, like this, or maybe the edge of the popsicle stick would work. So you can kind of just go back in and just redefine that line, but. <clears throat> Don't go like deep in there because then it'll kind of defeat the purpose. Okay, so you can do that if you want. Now, say I want to do something a little different. So maybe I don't want to do the coils for a, a row. Um, there's a lot of different things we can do. So I'm just gonna show you a few. So you can do the same kind of thing with these coils. Make one like a little bit thinner, like a skinnier um, coil.
Measure it out so you know what you have and get like an even number you'll remember or write it down. So I'm just gonna go with this four. And so what I'm gonna do here is make a little curl, kind of like a cinnamon bun. And can you see how this is starting to crack a little bit? That just means the clay is starting to get a little dry and that's fine um, because it's still, it's still being, it's still okay. But you wanna keep your eye on that. And then what I also do is I either use the brush or I just use my finger. Um, if you smooth it over your finger here and the slip acts a little bit like an eraser and erases those little fine cracks that are starting to form. Any cracks that you see, if you allow them to stay and get dry, they become bigger. They only get worse, basically what I'm saying. And the brush is good if you need to get kind of in there. So I used to have people slip and score the whole thing. So as it as you're curling, but I've realized that I don't, well, I just don't think it's necessary. So um, it's a little overkill. So if you like that shape and that size, then you can make a few more, or actually you'll wanna make maybe a lot more um, of them from a four inch coil. And you could have them kind of go around like that. So when you do go to attach this one, I'm going to I'm gonna score the bottom. And score these well, these things like to pop off. And then I'm going to score this top of the ring. You could score the whole thing and just kind of get it ready for everything. You could do all this part at once. That's what I would do. Instead of making one and putting on, then making another and putting it on, I would make them all and then do them all at once. And that is my advice. All right, I'm gonna put just a little water down right here. I'm going to shimmy it in there. Like that. And then what I wanna do is just smooth this over. Now, it's up to you if you wanna smooth this or leave it like this. If you want something to be waterproof um, and not kind of, you want to be able to put water in or something like that, like a vase for flowers, then you're going to want to smooth this, okay? You, you're going to want to have, there's like no, no little even fine holes that anything could get through. So you'll want to smooth this part. If you're going to do like a, thinking this will like hold your pencils or your toothbrush or something, then I don't really think it's necessary. If you're gonna plant something in it, um, you know, maybe you wanna plant a little succulent in it, I would put at least three holes on the bottom, okay, for drainage. And the holes, I would make them maybe, what's like a good, okay. Maybe use your um, paintbrush and just kind of poke the paintbrush through you know, like that, um, and that that should be good. I would do at least three. I've done one on some of my pots and it just doesn't really work as well. I think sometimes they get a little blocked, you know? All right, so I got one little cinnamon bun here and then I'll show you a couple other things I like to do. So we kind of had this little ball here ready and what a lot of people like to do is they like to then put these on like that and there's two reasons why that's not going to work one it's very heavy right and it's a lot of clay um and then the second thing is this is about an inch in diameter and we really can't put anything in the kiln that's 
wider than a half an inch. If we put this in the kiln, it, this is gonna take so long to like thoroughly dry out that there's a good chance it's gonna go into the kiln with the very center of it still having a little bit of water. And so these like to kind of pop. So, and then the other thing is this takes a while, right? So what I do is I just slice it in half and then I get two for one because no one needs to see that on the inside. And now I have two. So I'll do the same thing. I'll score this. I'll add a little slip. I already scored that part. And here's a good thing. Here's a good um, trick too. You wanna score the sides. So whatever they're gonna be next to, You gotta score that together. So shimmy it in. And then use the clay on the inside to smooth it out. Smooth it all together. Makes it really strong. And you can do that. Um, and then let me show you just a couple more little things I like to do. So I'm going to, let's see, I don't think this is enough. Let me just get a little more clay. Now, one thing you're going to want to do with clay sometimes is really just kind of work it out, okay? So this is kind of like stretching before a race <laughs> um, so that it bends and doesn't break. It gets it like kind of like in shape, like ready to go. I hope this video turns out. about is that it stopped. <laughs> we'll see. And it's tempting guys to just try to do this really fast, but what I just did, I tried to go fast and I it just kind of messed it up. So slow and steady. Be patient. This takes practice, so don't get too frustrated if you're like, this should be so easy. Why is it so hard? Just keep in mind that your ceramics teacher is bad at this too. <laughs> All right, so say you have something like this, you can actually then maybe kind of go around, right? So I'm gonna make this, it'll look kind of like a little, actually, let me put this on first so it has a little more of a, uniform, not uniform, but like a balance to it. You wanna keep your elements of art and principles of design in your back pocket, just kind of, kind of marinating in your mind a little bit so that you can kind of think about those opportunities. Like, okay, how can I make this more balanced? How can I, you know, add unity to the piece? How can I, um, you know, maybe do some rhythm or movement 
So I'm just smoothing out the back or the inside. And then I want to make a little arch that goes over here. So I'm going to score around where I want this arch to touch. Okay, and then I'm going to score one side of this. And again, if you think you're gonna be doing something multiple times, I would measure it with a ruler um, or your, you know, the little knuckle trick um, and maybe write it down so you don't forget, especially if you have like a few different things. And that way, you know, if you wanna do another one, you know exactly how long to make it to get the same size. I'm going to add some slip here. And again, I'm just adding water, but if you can kind of see, I mean, if you keep painting a little bit, the slip really starts to appear. It's just like a little glue. So I'm going to, this is like, it's curving this way and this way. So I'm gonna curve it this way first. I'm gonna shimmy it in there. And then I'm going to curl it down. Okay. And then there's holes in here too. So, but if I just use this, try to position myself here. I can really move the clay around to smooth this side. And you can't push too hard though, cause you don't want it to like, to squash the front. Up those holes. So a little trick, if you have a little hole like that, take a little piece of clay, kind of stuff it in there and then smooth it. You gotta smooth this really good around to kind of patch it. And this is something you should be doing as you go. If you wait till later to patch something, then the clays are at like a different stage of dryness and they won't really want to attach um, to each other. They'll, they'll want to separate. Starting to take shape here a little bit. Now, a little trick is as you're kind of going around, um, you always want to every now and then stand up and look straight down on it. Because I can see mine is starting to grow a little bit out. So I just want to be aware of that and um, prevent it from doing that anymore. Kind of write it out. All right, so we did some circles. We did some little cinnamon buns. We did a coil that's gonna kind of arch over. Yes. 
You can do any kind of shape if you want. You could do like a, some squares. But just remember that we can't put anything in the kiln over half an inch, so, half an inch thick. Last thing I'm going to show you is if you want to smooth everything out on the outside and then add some texture. So you'll just do what you did on the inside, on the outside, until that seam goes away. do this as you build up and you know a lot of times people are pretty anxious to add in some decorations but if you start to carve something right now can you see the little crumbs that start to form um, this is what happens when the clay is still workable so we don't really want to waste time doing this now you can erase anything Oh, hello, Wyatt. Kind of in the way, bud. Not kind of, like you're totally in the way. Get down. Goodbye. All right. Um, so, but by the time you kind of build this up, however far you want to go, um, you know, by the time you get to that, maybe you let it sit out for half a day or a day. Um, or kind of in the bag, but open its own bag. Um, then go back in and start to do your decorations or your um, different things. So there's a lot of different things you can use for your, um, you know, texture and your decorations. Um, gosh, you can find anything around the house, really. But um, one of my favorite things to do is to get leaves outside or flowers or, you know, anything like that and actually press them in to the side. Um, press them in really good. Let them kind of sit in there. And then when you peel them out, you have the imprint of that um, <laughs> leaf or flower or, you know, whatever. Uh, I like to do it with shells, too. Actually, let me grab a shell and I'll... I'm like a big time show collector. I found seven. Well, actually, I found nine um, sand dollars at the beach yesterday. All right, so I got these in Costa Rica. So um, I like to kind of press them in. a little better when it's a little drier because it's not quite as sticky. Let's see what's another good one. All right, 
so those are just a couple ideas to get you guys started. And once you get up to about, I don't know, I wouldn't go higher than six inches, to be honest. Because then it just gets a little bit too big. But if you really want to, I'm not going to stop you. All right. So what I would do now is um, I would finish building up all the way. I would, I would just kind of leave the bottom as it is and just keep going up. And then when things are drier, I can go back and clean things up. I can press more um, shapes into uh, the side or decorations or anything like that. Anything with texture, um, you can add in or press into the side, which is pretty cool. My cat just hissed at his toy. <laughs> oh God, okay. All right guys, signing off.